Hi guys, Ashley here from Performance Ground and today we're going to talk about tips that you can use to improve your rugby. So we've just had a long hot summer and the rugby season is going to creep up on you quicker than you think. So some pre-season's already started. If you've missed the ship, don't worry because we've got some tips here to get you into shape just before the season starts. So some things we need to address before we get into our training and that is first of all our movements. So these are things we're going to be doing in the gym. Okay. Our speed, so actually your, your sprinting speed and your movement on the pitch. Your energy systems, how fit you are and how well you can recover between bouts of exercise. And then also your recovery whilst you're training. So we need to address all of these points and then we can look a bit, little bit deeper into it and figure out the details of your training. So let's look at movement to start with. Obviously rugby requires full body big movements, you require a lot of force and there's a lot of sprinting, moving, tackling, grappling, any kind of movement that you can imagine. So we want to be working with big compound movements, that's your squat, your bench press, your deadlift and other barbell movements, dumbbell movements that are going to, that are going to recruit a lot of working muscle, a lot of muscle mass. And also then we need to be working within a full range to ensure that we can produce force through a full range and we're not compromised in any position. Often I'll hear rugby players say, I'm not a power lifter, I don't need to squat to depth. Or same with the bench press, don't need to come all the way down to, to full depth. And okay, it may not be completely specific to rugby, but if, if you're only training one, uh, like a limited range in your squat or your bench or any other movement, you're only going to be limited in that range to produce force as well. So as soon as you are taken out of that range, whether you're tackled or you're like grappling with someone, if you're taken out of that range, your muscle is going to be unstable and more susceptible to injury. So full range of movement and full movement when we're training in the gym. And obviously, to produce strength and improve our power, we need to be moving quickly. So always control the descent and move as fast as possible on the concentric part of the movement. That's on the squat, that's the way up. Deadlift, that's the way up. And a bench press, that's the way up. Slow on the way down, quick on the way up to improve that power. Okay, so speed. When we're actually on the pitch, we're covering about 10 meters each, or five to 10 meters each time we're sprinting. So we don't need to be doing lots of like high, intent, uh, high speed running and things like that. But the mo more importantly, we need to be working on accelerations and decelerations. So how quickly you can in in increase your speed and then how quickly you can slow down. When we've addressed this, we can have a look at your chain of change of direction. So how well you can actually change direction and uh, change your momentum from one direction to another. Say you're going to step someone or you're running a line, you need to be able to change direction whilst you're playing rugby. And obviously it's a, it's a sport, so you need to be able to react to certain stimulus, whether it's a call, whether it's a pass, whether it's a player moving, you need to be able to react each time something happens. So we're going to go through these kind of in succession. We're going to Try and address your accelerations and decelerations first. Make sure you're comfortable with these and you're accelerating quickly, decelerating quickly with control. Then we can take that onto your change of direction. Improvements in these, in your accelerations and decelerations, will instantly see improvements in your change of direction. You see improvements in your change of direction, all, the, all we have to add then is the reactive element, so your ability to read the game and react to a stimulus. When you've got an improved change direction and you can read the game really well, then your agility is going to improve as well. So next we need to have a look at energy systems. So obviously rugby's an 80 minute game plus extra time. You need to be able to last the full game if that's what's required from you. So there is an aerobic element. You need to be able to last 80 minutes. But majority of the work done is going to be using our phosphocreatine system, so sharp, short sprints, and then our anaerobic system, so things like grappling for maybe 30 seconds or sprinting, running, change direction, and doing work for up to 20 to 30 seconds. So that's going to tax our anaerobic system. So we need to address the, the speed and change direction practice work 
That will address the phosphocreatine system. You'll be able to move faster and be more explosive from training in this way. And same with the strength training in the gym. But we do need to address your aerobic and anaerobic systems as well. So to improve our aerobic system, typically we use uh, sustainable efforts for three minutes or upwards. But because we are going to be like rugby is a high intensity game, we need to be moving at high intensity. But to improve our aerobic system, we want to be using a rest to work ratio of one to one. So the, the work that you put in, say that's up to a minute, you need to then take a minute rest to be able to recover and go again. This means the intensity is not going to be massively high, but we can keep a sustainable pace and improve our aerobic system. Then we need to address the anaerobic system. So we're going to be working at much higher rates uh, of intensity, much shorter time periods, but then also shorter rest periods as well. So the anaerobic system, you're going to be working up to 30 seconds of high intensity work with up to four times that of rest. So even up to two minutes of rest so you can fully recover before you go again. And then recovery. So there are three things that you really need to keep, uh, keep an eye on when you're training hard. So we've got six weeks until your, uh, your season starts. So where are your rest days going to be? They're probably the most important days throughout the week. So two to three rest days. If you're going to be training in the gym twice a week, doing two speed sessions and maybe one or two uh, energy system development sessions, you need to be resting throughout the week as well. So two or three rest days are really, really important. Make sure you're getting enough sleep. So at least eight hours on a training day. So quite a lot of sleep really allow your body to recover. You don't improve on the pitch in the gym. You improve when you sleep. Okay. And then your nutrition, make sure that you're eating enough to fuel your body and you're eating at least 1.6 grams of protein to be able to uh, build your muscles and repair. So we've addressed there your movement, your speed, how to improve your speed, how to improve your energy systems, and then what you should be doing for your recovery. If you want more information on this, head over to our blog at trainwithpg.com and hit the blog section. And all of this is explained and there's a, a six week program on there to get you ready for rugby season. If I've missed anything out. If you think that something else should be addressed during your run up to the rugby season, let us know in the comments section below. If you like this video, hit like and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.